Welcome to ArchiOffice Online. I'm here to offer you a little advice before you dive in to help make your experience successful. You should already have received an email with instructions on how you can log into ArchiOffice Online. You'll go to ArchiOfficeOnline.com and click the Login button. Enter your email address and password and click Login. You'll notice an array of tabs at the top of the screen. The second tab, called Manage Users, is where you're going to add each of your employees who will be given permission to log into ArchiOffice Online. You'll enter their first name, last name, their email address, and select the type of user they are, either a standard user or an administrator of ArchiOffice Online. Click the Add button, and they will receive an email from ArchiOffice Online with instructions as to how they can log in, along with a temporary password. Down below, you're going to notice there's a list of users that I have already added to my version of ArchiOffice Online. I'm going to click the Open button to launch my ArchiOffice Online database. The first thing you need to do before creating any projects or contacts is to spend some quality time going through all of the preference settings. Most of these settings should be self-explanatory, but if you don't understand, Please use the Help button that is found in the upper right section, just below the main navigation tabs on every screen. Really take your time to click each preference area and look at all of the various options. And while this isn't as much fun as jumping in and creating projects, contacts, and time and expense records, this effort alone will save you so much time that you'll be glad you waited. Of particular importance will be the security settings. I know you don't want all of your employees having access to sensitive information, so before you give them the ability to log in, make sure your workgroups have been properly configured and your employees assigned to the appropriate workgroups. Also, if you plan to modify our default project phases, be aware that we also have an extensive task system associated with each of the phases. So if you delete a default phase, the tasks will be orphaned. Instead, consider renaming the phases to ones that make sense to your firm and are similar in the scope of work you'll be doing so that the tasks can be easily modified and not have to be created from scratch. Or simply deactivate the phase and create your own new phases. ArchiOffice is a project-centric solution. This means that everything revolves around your projects. So I'm going to take a moment and show you how you can create a new project and start tracking your time on it. First, it's going to be necessary to create the client for the project. So I'm going to go to the Contacts module. You'll notice that I'm in the List view, and it's showing all of the contacts who are in our database right now who I am currently active with. I'm going to go to the Action pull-down menu on the far right and select New. I'll enter in all of the relevant information about my contact in the contact details screen, including their name, company, title, and even assign her to certain groups that I have set up in my preferences. Next, I'll enter in her phone number, email, and all of her other pertinent address information, and click Save. Since Laura will be receiving invoices from us to her work address, I'll click the Billing checkbox which also creates two new tabs in her contact record where I'll be able to see all of her invoices and payment transactions in the future. Now I'm ready to create Laura's new project. I open the Projects tab inside of Laura's contact record and I use the Action drop-down menu and select New. It opens a small window where it has already selected Laura Bradford as the client, so I only need to enter the project name and it provided a default project number using the next sequence in Preferences. I can overwrite that and give it a unique project number if I like. Once the project is created, I find myself in the Projects module. I'll take a moment to select the project type and a few other fields such as the Principal in Charge and the Project Manager. I'll also update the billing rate for me based on what I will be able to charge on this project. I'll also go ahead and add any other members of the firm to the project team and assign them their role and their bill rates on this project. I can even reorder them using the small up-down arrow on the far left of the team members' names. The Phases and Codes tab is where I can control which phases and job codes are used on this project. 
Since we already know the general contractor we will be using, we won't be needing the construction procurement phase, so I'll go ahead and delete it now. Later on, I'm going to come back and budget the project, but for now, I'm ready to start tracking time. I move to the Time and Expense module where I'm looking at the Time Card screen. When I place my cursor in the Project field, it expands to display a list of projects I'm working on. Since Bradford is the only project in our system, that's all I can select. After I select a project, it displays the phases that are currently active for it. In this case, I can choose between pre-design, schematic design, or design development. The other phases are currently inactive. I select schematic design and it automatically selects the only available job code, basic services. I'm then presented with a drop-down list of pending tasks for schematic design on this project. And since I just finished working on the goals board, I'll select the reports category where I see the goals board is still pending and available. I enter the amount of time I spent and click the add button. My preference was to leave the previous project info for the next record which makes it easy for me to put incremental time in on my projects. So all I need to do now is select another task that I was working on. So I'll add one hour worked on the building plans. Well, there you have it. That's how easy it is to add contacts, projects, and start tracking your time. While there is so much more you can do with ArchiOffice Online, this little demonstration should help you get started while you continue your exploration through the other features. Our expectation is by using ArchiOffice Online, you will experience a dramatic improvement in your office and project management capabilities. Over the past 10 years, our team has worked closely with thousands of architectural firms, large and small, to develop an unprecedented suite of tools that provide just the right balance of ease of use and value. Ultimately, we gauge our success on your ability to provide the finest services to your clients while increasing your efficiency and profitability.